I could, can you see? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Hmm. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music? <laughs> that very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal throned by the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft, quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress passed on in maiden meditation, fancy free. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. <laughs> Fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make a man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the leviathan can swim a league. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion or bear or wolf or bull, on meddling monkey or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> And ere I take the charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. <laughs>